Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, we just installed this Generac and uh, that's pretty much a no-brainer just flopping it down. I had to build up a bed for it and uh, form it in a little bit, throw some gravel down. But we're installing this uh, transfer switch and uh, I'm going to show you how you do that. Uh, we have to uh, take this uh, two-inch uh, LB conduit body here and drill a hole right in here through the concrete and it's coming out the other side and I drill, uh, drill a hole through the top. We also got to drill a hole on this side so we can connect it to the uh, meter when uh, they come out to shut the power off. I'm just prepping this right now so I'll be ready so when the power guy comes, off, comes out to shut the power off. Uh, so I'm fixing to drill this out and uh, Hopefully I'll be in the center part of the block when I come when I come the through. First thing I want to say about this uh, transfer switch install is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a professional electrician, nor do I claim to be. So uh, take this install with a grain of salt. All right, guys. So I'm measuring from the uh, ceiling because I know uh, on the other side I have to come down seven feet. The eave is just above me here. So seven feet. That way I come under. Uh, come under an airline so I'm gonna start my hole just under here I'm a little bit loud all right guys mr. safety man here we go Alright guys, there I got through the first uh, part. Uh, I got, it looks like I got lucky because I missed the solid part of the uh, block right there. But I can just shoot it straight All on right, in there. We're going to shoot through to the other side. guys uh initially i was going to uh run the feeder conductors uh, i was going to feed them back through the uh, meter base but i was doing some reading and i found out online that uh a meter cabinet you're, you're not allowed to run conductors from the uh, transfer switch back through the meter cabinet and into the uh into the electrical panel that uh, your meter cabinet is only for electric that is coming from the meter. This is okay coming from the meter, but I can't double it, double it back through the meter from the transfer switch back in here. Uh, I can't use the meter as a raceway or a conduit. It's a cabinet and I cannot uh, do All it. Right, guys, let me see if I can knock this knock out through the bottom of this panel here. Alright guys, we're going to put my uh, fitting in here with the nut on top of it. So yeah, that looks nice and square. Now what I'll do is I'll take this cover off, drill two holes in there in the concrete so it fastens this. Oh yeah, I keep harping on safety. Don't start a job like this without a hot cup of coffee. You might electrocute yourself. <clears throat> Before I fasten this back on there, I'm gonna glue this into this. And you don't need any primer with this stuff. All right, guys. 
let's glue this last piece. These two didn't mind, uh, didn't matter, but I do have it marked here. All right, guys, I have this conduit all glued. All right, guys, I got this mark made here. Just took this down, put it up there and marked it. I'm gonna get halfway close, so I'm gonna mark this down here and then uh, cut cut the box out. All right, guys, this, I got a uh, hole saw here at 60 millimeter. I've got to cut a hole out for this uh, PVC adapter to go in here. These knockouts here are to be cut in the field. That means uh, it doesn't have a knockout to get. Guys, yes, uh, I don't want you to make this. I, I got it to work, but I cut this hole a little too far back. I cut this hole a little too far back, which made it hard for me to put my nut on. And the bushing went on easy, it just spun right on, but I had to put the nut on and tighten it from here. That's an $800 box, you don't want to mess that burger up. All right, I'm just taking a pencil, lining that up so I can see that. I bought me some flex tubing, uh, liquid, uh, it's called liquid tight and I got these fittings here well it's an inch and a half this fitting here is just about a quarter inch too big I'm gonna go ahead and install it I'm just gonna grind this out My here bird dog there guys I don't think I've introduced you scoop he's a heck of a dog man good boy he likes squirrels Lizards, birds, loves people and dogs. That's my hunting dog. So yeah, uh, the uh, utility source will come out of the box through here. I'll loop it up back into the uh, into the uh, transfer box, and it'll come in here. I got a cover for this. And then it'll come out here at the bottom, T1 and T2 connection. I was gonna run it from here back through here because I have uh, a two aught. And I think I could have done that. It would have been tight, but it's illegal. Uh, I can't, I can't uh, run uh, power from a different source back through the meter. So now I, if you look on YouTube, some of the guys are. They're running it back through the meter and using this as a, uh, a conduit, but it, it's a meter, meter housing, meter box, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and another reason why I can't run it back through there is because uh, I, I, if, if there's a nicked wire or something like that, it could uh, backfeed the uh, meter and uh, cause problem with maybe... Uh, the electrical guys getting electrocuted, power guys getting electrocuted. So this is the way uh, it says to do it. I cannot run it back through that can. All right, guys, I'm gonna do on this side what I did on the other side before I, uh, before I glue it. All right, I got my little fasteners here. Looks good. The holes lined up. All right, guys, we're gonna cut one more hole for this uh, liquid tight fitting. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm not cutting it too far back this time. I wasn't happy with this cut. 
cut here. I want to make sure all the gaps are full. So I got this stuff online. Uh, if you live in California, don't mess with it. Proposition 65. Uh, it's a duct seal. It's for uh, AC equipment, for electrical stuff. But I'm going to paste some stuff on here so uh, it seals it up. It's got a little bit of a gap here that I'm not happy with. And I'm just going to uh, put this on the edge of this. I think so what I got here is this little sanding disc wheel. And it seems to be eating it up a little bit. So let's hope that works so I can get that liquid tight fitting in there. I don't want to send that back. There, that's it right there. So that'll work perfect. Yeah, as I put some of that sealer on the uh, inside lip of that uh, liquid tight fitting. Uh, let me show you something here. Uh, all in one cable here. And this is from, uh, this is from, uh, Zillar Electric, and it's and it's good for uh, Generac generators. Uh, wire 17 kW to 24 kW copper, uh, and it's got your uh, two hot wires in it, your neutral, and your six uh, and your six control wires, and your ground wires. So when you use that. You don't need to use both of those knockouts on the back of this uh, generator. Let me show so you. So we'll only have one liquid tight uh, cable running from it and it'll be through here. Now it said if you don't use both entrances, knock that one out, <coughs> throw it away. So when I start a project guys, I, I, I just don't jump into it and start uh, slinging things around and like I know what I'm doing. I actually read the directions. Uh, right here, uh, Close, close unused hole with a NEMA, NEMA, NEMA 3R rated plug field supplied. Field supplied means I'll get it. And they're talking about this right here. So the part number on that is uh, X003CEZIK. That's so all it is. Two pieces of washer and a butterfly nut. So I'm just gonna stick this piece in the gray with the gray side out. It's got the foam on it and uh, this washer on. And there it is. Looks good out here. So this is an inch and a half liquid tight connector. My uh, that cable in there is an inch. I got it facing down for the drip loop. Now while I have you here, before I forget. Uh, you can't come off of this with PVC. You have to come off of it with uh, liquid tight flexible tubing because it's a motor, it vibrates and uh, they don't want it to break. They want something that's gonna give and that's gonna go run all the way down here with a loop in it up to the bottom of that. All right box. guys, what I'm gonna fill this hole up here is with some gray slab caulk. Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, some things I want to go over on the installation. Uh, I know I said it's just a no-brainer to plop this thing down. It's a little bit more uh, work than that. But uh, never start a job without a nice hot cup of coffee. Otherwise you can screw it up badly. Mm. So almost everything you need to know will come in your instruction uh, packet. I highlighted some things for myself, so when I get ready to uh, hook the electric up, I can go over pretty quickly. But uh, your installation guide, almost everything's there that you need to know, so. You don't have to be an electrician, you just have to have a little confidence in yourself, and that's what I'm trying to do, give you guys some confidence. So you, you want to read all this stuff. Uh, owner's manual the installation guy is really important and the uh 
The owner's manual for the automatic transfer switch. All, all these are very important. I made some notes for myself, so like I said, I'm not a, a professional electrician and uh, this is just for entertainment purposes. From what I gather, it's gotta be like eight inches above flood grade. So I built this pad up. Some uh, a AHJ uh, authority having, having jurisdiction will allow you just to plop this uh, generator right on the uh, gravel, on your gravel pad. Uh, I live in Central Florida, so they require you to bolt it down to a concrete pad. For some bullet points I want to talk about here is uh, it ha it needs to be uh, most of these directions are in here, Eight, 18 inches from the house. 20 inches I'll call it 20 inches from the house so we're good there you need three feet from each end uh, whether that's a building or a fence it has to be at least three feet uh, where we're we're we are required to put a, a fence right here at the end everything from the exhaust to the intake has to be three feet away meter access so you just can't plop this in front of a meter and call it good this has to be, uh, you need a four foot leeway from the center of this, uh, center of this meter. Uh, I think this jurisdiction only requires 18 inches from the center of this meter, but I put it out uh, two feet. Uh, if you're placing the uh, generator in front of the meter, you have to come out 36 inches, which would be right here. You would have to place the back of this generator the back of this has to be three feet away from that meter so the meter guy has an access uh, way to walk if you're putting it in front of the meter oh also uh this generator cannot be within uh, three feet of the uh, meter the intake here which is a source of ignition cannot be closer than five feet to the regulator the regulators right here seven feet from the regulator, uh, the ignition uh, point of the uh, generator. We also need to be five feet from the regulator, the gas company's regulator, because there is a regulator inside this uh, generator. We need to be five feet from the transfer switch. And we're well over uh, any, any source of ignition. For 12 feet, the uh, transfer switch is gonna go here we're uh, 12 feet from the transfer switch. So any switches, uh, source of ignition, like an engine and stuff like that, has to be five feet away uh, from the uh, gas, uh, gas company's regulator. Oh yeah, minimum distance between uh, the gas meter and the uh, electric meter here is 36 inches, so if your gas company comes in and installs a gas meter within uh, 36 inches of your meter, it's wrong. Chances are they won't do that. That's something you won't have to worry about. They want you to hook your generator up as close to the uh, power source as you can get, only to save you money uh, and as close to the, uh, this is if you're hiring it done or it'll keep you from buying material too. Uh, you want to get it as close to the uh, gas meter and the electric meter as possible. Now, sometimes it's not possible because you may have a window or a door here. You may have to set the generator down there and run uh, cable to your uh, meter, your transfer switch, and pipe to your uh, uh, gas meter. It has to be, uh, your uh, generator has to be five feet away from the uh, property line. Hey guys, installing this generator is not uh, terribly complicated. Uh, the hardest part for me was pulling a permit. Uh, our uh, permitting department that we work with is uh, really easy and helpful. So they made it easy for me. Uh, once they wrote it down in crayon for me, I was able, able to understand it and uh, pull my permit for my uh, generator. All right guys, fix it John. Uh, before trying to get a permit, don't do anything without a hot cup of coffee. Might overlook something. Uh, first, you're going to need a survey. And that doesn't mean that you need to have the survey crew come out and 
spend 500,000, whatever they charge dollars <laughs> for a survey of your property. Cause they want to know property lines and where you're going to place your generator. Uh, you can print this survey up online and uh, submit that. So we're, this is how you uh, work towards getting your permit. Your permit. Uh, the company uh, submitted this to the city that uh, did the plumbing. Now, if you're going to do the plumbing yourself, you'll need to submit something like this. Uh, I, I don't have a thread cutter and all that, and it just too much, too much uh, trouble renting one, and uh, just too not cost effective. It was pretty cost effective to have those guys come out and run this gas plumbing to my uh, generator hot water tank and the uh, fireplace. So you can do it yourself or have them do it. So this is a diagram of what their work. Now, don't laugh <laughs> because mine is the next diagram. I did the best I can. I'm not a professional at uh, this kind of stuff, but uh, so I got my job name here and it's uh, just my, my name and it's right there. So. I just wanted to show where everything was, like number one, number two, uh, number one regulator. Uh, oh yeah, it's not to scale either. Number one regulator, number two gas meter, because they're interested that your intake to your uh, uh, generator is at least five feet from the uh, uh, regulator. And the regulator's right here, and it is seven. Uh, another thing that I want before you can get your permit is a specification sheet. Uh, that way they know what kind of uh, generator it is. And this this page here is probably the page they really need right here, the spec sheet. Uh, you know, the rated amperage and stuff. They probably don't want you putting a big uh, diesel generator in your house that you'd never get a permit for anyway. Uh, that would run a hospital, so. Uh, they want that, the spec sheet. And, oh yeah, one more thing. If you guys live in Florida, a friend of mine had uh, had a generator. He put a generator in. And uh, he said, John, they're gonna, they're gonna want this uh, spec sheet here for your precast pad. And this is probably only in Florida. I mean, if you don't live in a wind uh, wind zone, like a hurricane wind zone or something, uh, you probably won't need it because you know this is acceptable for uh, Fort Myers, Palm Beach, Broward, Miami Dade, and that's 165 Monroe, 175 mile an hour wind wind risk. Here's a license number for the guy that made this thing. But I'm sure you can go online because uh, you don't get this. You don't get this uh, sheet here when you uh, get your uh, concrete pad. Uh, so that was approved by the city. Once you have all that stuff, the city will give you your permit. So uh, what I am doing is the uh, building and electrical and the uh, gas company is doing the gas piping. Uh, if you see here, contractor, it says owner, builder. That's me. Yeah. The inspector gave me his personal number, so when the guy, the uh, power guy is coming out tomorrow, I'll just call the inspector and say, boom, we're ready for inspection, and that way I'll get the uh, electrical guy oh, back. Oh, yeah, one more thing, guys. You'll want to you wanna call the city after you do the uh, first rough-in. So, like, you saw that uh, conduit I had out there all roughed in. Uh you want them to come out there and uh, sign that so when uh, they come out again, they can uh, do the final electric, and that's 204. You call them, you tell them what number, you call them up, you tell them, and they're real good here. I got it from uh, AP Electric and Generators. Uh, they're out of uh, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. They were the cheapest place I could find it. And that was uh, with free shipping and uh, lift gate service to your house. Uh, I ordered this as a package unit to get the uh, gen pad, the four inch hurricane gen pad. Uh, you guys in uh, Florida may want uh, may right, want to order Then that. you come to this page, page 14, and they ask for the uh, fault current uh, 
label. And it looks just like this. And they want that, it says on the outside of your uh, transfer switch, but you want to put it on the inside. But if you live in a jurisdiction uh, that recognizes 2017, you'll need to fill this out. Uh, residential one and two uh, family home dwellings, I think it is. This but, is not required, this fault current rating is not required for residents. If your a AHJ authority having uh, jurisdiction goes by the 2020 NEC, they did away with this for uh, uh, residential homes. Still applies for commercial uh, businesses and uh, big uh, you know, apartment complexes and stuff like that. But for one and two uh, family dwellings, uh, this is no longer needed. But our jurisdiction recognizes 2017 NEC, so I have to fill this out. The available fault current for uh, Ours is at 240 volts, it's 13,900. And at 120 volts, it's 20,800. And to get this information, you'll need to call the builder's, uh, builder's uh, line. The fault current rating is 22 KA. KA rating is, a, uh, is the uh, short circuit withstand capacity. So, uh, this number should always be bigger than this number to be approved. So, I mean, if you're throwing a uh, 20 amp breaker on there, that's obviously not gonna be big enough. Let me show you how I found the 22 KA rating. Uh, I read this stuff and I just zoomed right by it. So back on page five, Right here, a 200 amp rated switch is suitable for use on a circuit capable of 22,000 RMS symmetrical amps. So all that means is that 22,000 RMS symmetrical amps is, uh, it's just a unit of measure and it describes the fault. It's not in the book like it is here. It'll be on your breaker. So that's one way to Let find it. show you on the transfer switch here, guys. The uh, fault current rating is 22 KA. Hey guys, there's Duke Energy. They showed up. I've been waiting on them not too long. They're actually here earlier than I thought. And what they're going to do is they're going to de energize the power to the house and open up that uh, transformer so we don't get electrocuted working on that uh, generator. They're all my safety stuff, but I'm getting trouble. Got my dishwashing gloves here. Oh, neat. over here that blue zip tie yeah so that'll identify when i go into the transformer hopefully somebody left a blue zip tie on the other oh, end. oh okay and i can they'll tell me which one is yours over there so don't stick your finger in there that's okay. hot wow well, the old days i haven't had a new one off but the old days you just you had to take that front cover off there and then uh it depends yeah, all these uh they got different style meters some uh Meters come off first, and some of the lid comes off. He's got the lock off and he unscrewed it. And this is usually where all the black racers shoot out between my legs when I open these. Up. And there it is, guys. I've never seen in one of these myself. There. So, yeah. See, that's death right there. Just that. Well, that is something. 
not no. marked. Let me grab my meter. X1, X2, and X3, and I imagine one of those are, is the neutral. X2 is your neutral, X3 and X1 are your, to your hot legs. Telephone style is a little easier, isn't it? Telephone pole style where you just unflip the... Yeah, a lot easier. Double check, I got the okay. right one. Just stay clear of this thing. Yes, sir. Just gonna check, make sure one of the legs are off, hot leg. So there, now he's marking it for the next guy that comes. Yeah, this is a newer transformer, so whoever was here the, when they came to the south should have went through and marked all these. But. It's too much to ask. Those must be good insulated gloves. Yeah, these are good up to... Uh, work on our uh, primary 7,000 volts of these. Wow. This is a bus bar, so this is 120, 120, you get your 240 between them, and then that's your neutral down there. Okay. Like I said, it'd be, uh, these are eight hole blocks, you can have like eight houses. This coming is, out of one transformer. This is single phase, right? Yeah, single phase. This is your 7200 comes in to this transformer. Oh, wow, I see. Comes out and goes to your next one. Oh, okay. It's a big wow. loop around the whole neighborhood. All right, there he is, guys. Testing both legs, zero, zero. Good to go. All right, and he pulled that. Uh, that's a surge protector there, guys. Uh, that's an old, same same thing. It's a different style. They call it a lightning arrester or a surge protector, okay. and they're wired in there. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to try to stay out of your way. I'm testing, double-checking, just double-checking for the power coming in here. That's a hot leg there. That's neutral. We're at zero. I got one on hand here, so I'm trying to... Got a hot leg here. This is coming in from the uh, transformer. Neutral, zero. He knows what he's doing. You just want to double check and make sure it, the power is off. All right, guys, we're taking these conductors off. These are the two hot leads. These are torqued at 250 pound inch. All right, we can no longer use this conduit uh, raceway here anymore. Uh, once the power leaves, it can't return through this box. That was my initial uh, thinking that I could just shoot this power, shoot the wire through this uh, meter box back through here up to the uh, tr uh, transfer switch down and back through here and in, but no such luck. I found out that I have to take it a different route. You can't, you can't cross two, 
two hot lines from two different power sources. One of the power sources being the transformer, the transformer and the other power source being the generator. All right, guys, let me give you a close up in here. If you can see that. See that ground wire moving around that uh, lug? That's pretty loose. So I bought this handy dandy uh, torque screwdriver on Amazon. And yeah, that's way loose. All right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock this uh, knock out here. I want to be careful I don't take the top one. I only want this centerpiece here. All right, guys, here's the scary part for me, uh, gluing these pipes in, because it's you need three arms to get this thing in there. I've got a shim behind it and it lined up there so I know where to so I know where to put it. All right, guys, I got it in there. The glue's drying, and uh, what I'm doing now is uh, taking these uh, screws here with these rubber washers. See it right there? That way it'll seal out the water. This thing will smash down and seal any water that will come in and uh, fasten it in there. So we've got one in already. We've got another one right here. All right, guys, I'm going to try to feed uh, three out cables and one uh, four, four gauge uh, copper. guys that was a little bit of a job pulling that cable through there uh, we're using some soapy water to lubricate that stuff up lubricate this cable up so uh, I'm just gonna run them one at a time now All right, 275 foot inches. There it is. She's on there. Uh, 275 foot inches. All right, guys. This grounding, uh, 
ground. It's gonna be, put it right up here. We're gonna to torque that down to 50 foot inch pounds. There we go. Put my neutral in. All right, guys, this is uh, 275 pounds also. There it is. All right, we've got two more hot pieces to run, guys. See what we're torqued at. Need 150. All right, guys, I got to shorten this. I knew I'd have to, but <clears throat> suckers hard, hard to cut with that too tiny thing. May want to step up and get something a little bigger. The uh, inspector went ahead and uh, approved it. Uh, it's a partial, a partial approval. Uh, that way we can get our power on. He said we got all the wires hooked up. But uh, what he told me was this ground wire that I ran all the way from the uh, service panel. He said it, I do not need it, and I wasn't for sure on it, so I ran it anyway. Uh, he said it won't hurt anything. He said what I need was this right here. He said it won't hurt anything, but it's just double uh, double grounding. He's a nice guy. Uh, I'm right here. That hole there that where the uh, other wire went through, he had me, uh, he wanted me to spray foam in it or put this uh, duct sealer in it. You electrical guys know what that is. Uh, duck seal so yeah glad i had that i didn't have any foam 
So yeah, we're all hooked up out here. We're waiting on the uh, power guy and... Uh... Guys, I'll try to keep my big head out of the way here, but I doubt it's going to happen. Uh, trying to get done before uh, Duke gets out of here. barely got enough wire here all right guys this is sec sec cable again so i can go through here it's not gonna hurt it it's tough as iron okay All right, guys, we're stripping this uh, SEC wire. Oh. This stuff is stout. Hopefully you can see what's going on. I'm gonna start with this black wire and it's going into E1. So I'll have to put the black wire up there on E1. They're always cut off, I can't put on. Hey guys, remember, whenever messing around with electricity, I always have a hot cup of coffee. Ah, I could save your life. Mmm, mountain grown. I like using this to cut the cable because it doesn't smash it. it. Leaves it nice and usable. All right, we got three more wires. One blue. Two yellows. You just clip and stick. That's all these are. We're gonna run this ground up here, I guess, first. All right, now we're gonna put our neutral up here. Uh, coming from the generator. Put that right there in that one. Ooh, that's pretty. Alright guys, we're going to cut these wires because they're way too long. You don't need all that. Leave a little bit though. In case they settle. In case it settles. Now if you had to run these longer, they, they would need to be a bigger gauge wire. Like uh, these are 18 gauge, like 14 gauge, and on up. 12 gauge if you got a real long run 
we don't have a real long run. That's why uh, I was able to get this all-in-one cable. All right, we're going to do the white one first here. Right, guys, let's see if I can get this sucker hooked up here. Hey guys, right there, uh, I got all my sensor wires in there. Now I got to work on the power from the generator and I'll be done with this. So E1 is black, E1 is black down there. Now this, uh, these two wires here guys, this is a, uh, hot wires coming from the generator. So when this power goes out here at the meter, uh, 10 seconds, five seconds, whatever, the uh, generator will pop on and then power will current through here and then go through the uh, two uh, hot cables right here into the house, into the service panel. Uh, now I'm gonna throw my fault current label on here and uh, I think I'm just gonna throw it right under the breaker that little sticky thing right there. There. Power neutral wires coming from the uh, meter going up here. Two hot legs right now going into the uh, breaker. One neutral right here coming around. This neutral here goes all the way down and into the uh, service panel and here these will be two hot legs when i flip that breaker on now when the power goes out uh, the power will come from these two legs from the generator and uh, proceed down these these two legs here so uh, you can make the generator run by shutting it off uh, We've got the power off right now, so it's not going to run, and the breaker off. Guys, we're ready to put some juice to our transfer switch. Now let's go inside here and see if we've got any power. All right, we got power there. There's my surge protector I just put in, guys. That'll be on another video. Uh, look up in the comments and you'll see the surge, uh, how to install surge protector. We've got lights. Just like the rich kids down the street. Okay. All right, guys, fix it, John here. Uh, I hope you like this uh, generator a switch box install if you did like and subscribe give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching if you have any questions within the next year or two while this is still fresh in my mind uh go ahead and give me a shout i mean i'm doing all i'm doing different stuff all the time so i don't constantly do the same thing all the time and i may forget a little bit but uh, i'm going to try to see that the generator's on auto this is the first time for me I'm going to try to see if the generator runs. So I'm gonna uh, hit this circuit breaker, it's on on. I'm gonna turn it to off. So this thing should start within five, five, 10 seconds. Five or ten seconds after it transfers. 